The aquarium at the Point Defiance Zoo is now ready for visitors. Tacoma police are keeping things safe on the waterfront, and local residents look skyward to see an amazing sight. All that and more on this edition of Tacoma Report. Hi, and welcome to this edition of Tacoma Report. I'm Laura Proctor. It has been a few months since Angie Foster and I have sat in our anchor chairs due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Although we were not able to bring the amazing stories to you surrounding the happenings in Tacoma, Lane Ficke did a phenomenal job filling in for us. I have truly missed my TV Tacoma family and you, the viewers. It feels good to be back in the anchor chair and I hope you have missed us as much as we have missed all of you. Construction on the YWCA affordable housing project is moving right along. Even though COVID-19 slowed things down a bit on the complex that will aid clients of the YWCA, it's still expected to open next January as originally planned. Because we're an affordable housing project, we were exempt from the stay at home mandate. It did affect us, however, because um, only affordable housing projects could continue, which affected the supply chain um, from subcontractors. Uh, so we're picking back, um, picking back up and trying to catch up a little bit. Um, but our substantial completion date is now January 23rd. And this project, 75% of the 54 units are set aside for homeless families. Um, who currently would not be housed if not for this project and similar projects like it throughout the city. This is permanent housing. I think people have a hard time wrapping their heads around that because um, it, people are, uh, are kind of more used to transitional housing, but this is permanent housing. So our clients can stay, our tenants can stay as long as they need and want to. Um, hopefully some of them will move up and out um, not everyone will want to be in downtown Tacoma for years and years and years, um, but they can stay as long as they need to and as long as they uh, desire to. Another aspect of the new building will be a 4,000 square foot expansion of the YWCA's free counseling program that their clients will have access to. The Tacoma City Council recently passed an ordinance to update and clarify rules related to active transportation. Stacy Elifrid has more on what these new mobility rules are and how they will work to align with current city policies and best practices. Code updates were started as the city began looking at shared micromobility. Through community conversations on how this program should be structured, feedback was given on where transportation options should be allowed, as well as on the variations in the city's helmet law, which previously applied to bikes, scooters, skateboards, and roller skates, but not e-bikes. So that was the rationale for starting to dig into the code. Um, but as we started digging, we found that there it was really time for a more comprehensive update. So our goals for this update were to clarify the rules of operation for active transportation, reduce the likelihood of enforcement action stemming from code elements that don't really align with city policy or best practices. We wanted to build on lessons learned from micromobility pilot best practices and stakeholder outreach, and better align the Tacoma Municipal Code with our city's transportation master plan and the revised Code of Washington. 24 changes to the code were made as part of ordinance number 28678, which took effect on July 20th, a lot of which was updating definitions and removing outdated provisions, with a few major changes. So first we added a requirement that people who are riding electric scooters, skateboards, roller skates, or similar modes on sidewalks or trails need to yield to people who are walking or using assistive mobility devices. We also are allowing people to ride bicycles on sidewalks in business districts. And we want to give people the opportunity to ride where they feel safe as long as they are yielding to the pedestrians using the sidewalk. Electric scooters will now be allowed in bicycle facilities. So they're still allowed to ride on sidewalks, but other communities have found that most e-scooter users prefer riding in bike facilities, particularly when they're protected rather than on the sidewalk. The last major change was in removing the city's mandatory helmet law and replacing it with a statement and code that outlines how the city of Tacoma strongly encourages the use of helmets. So the city will continue efforts to reduce barriers to accessing helmets and educate the community on why and how to wear them. The city will continue to pursue a multifaceted approach to enhance the safety of our transportation system 
And we also wanted to make it clear, and we wrote this in code, that the change does not supersede state helmet laws for motorcycles, mopeds, or motor-driven cycles. Growing research shows that while helmets are effective and the city strongly encourages their use, mandatory helmet laws are not the most equitable or effective strategy to maximizing public health outcomes. So helmets are effective and people should wear one every time they bike, skate, or scoot. Um, there's so many reasons to wear a helmet from protecting your head and brain in case of a crash to setting a good example. I think some people heard we changed the law and thought that we were telling people they couldn't or shouldn't wear a helmet. That's absolutely not the case. With so many different options, there's sure to be a helmet to fit any style and budget. Some things to remember include making sure that it fits, replace it after an accident, or if it's more than five to 10 years old. And then while COVID-19 has put a lot of our on the ground outreach and events on hold, we will continue efforts to reduce barriers to accessing helmets and work with community partners to make sure that anybody who needs a helmet can get one. Studies have shown that mandatory helmet laws decrease ridership. Um, so we hope this change will do the opposite. As more people start to ride, the streets become safer for everybody. For Tacoma Report, I'm Stacey Ellifrit. For more information on active transportation in Tacoma, visit the city's website. The state has issued an order directing businesses to inquire and enforce the use of face coverings by all customers and visitors. As a reminder, all visitors to the Tacoma Recovery and Transfer Center must wear a face mask while visiting this location. Currently, the center is open seven days per week from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. to City of Tacoma residential customers with garbage or yard waste loads only. For the most up-to-date information on the Tacoma Recovery and Transfer Center, visit the Solid Waste Management site. National Night Out is typically held the first Tuesday in August every year, but due to the coronavirus, it has been postponed this year. National Night Out is a community building campaign that promotes police community partnerships and neighborhood camaraderie. It helps to enhance the relationship between neighbors and law enforcement while bringing back a true sense of community. It also provides a great opportunity to bring police and neighbors together under positive circumstances. This year's event has been postponed until October 6th, the first Tuesday in October. For more information, go online. If you're looking for a way to get out and enjoy the urban environment, why not take a walk, bike, or run on the Prairie Line Trail? The trail is a historic way through the brewery district in downtown Tacoma. Artists from the area and from around the country have added artwork representing the history of the trail, the waterfront, and Tacoma's transformation. More information is available at their website, including an interactive trail map. Tacoma was recently selected to receive the American Public Works Association 2020 Project of the Year Award. The city was selected for the Fishing Wars Memorial Bridge Project. Construction on the bridge, located on Puyallup Avenue between Portland Avenue and Milwaukee Way, was completed in September 2019 with a cost of over $30 million. The project removed and replaced one-third of the bridge, as well as eight bearings, added new street lighting, sidewalks, bike lanes, and a new gateway structure. The winners of this year's awards will be featured in a video posted to the APWA site in late August. The skies over Tacoma were recently filled with a lot of smoke and color. We're not talking about fireworks. We're talking about the U.S. Army Golden Knights Parachute Team. Tacoma was one of three cities that the demonstration parachuters jumped over in recognition of healthcare workers, first responders, and other essential workers in the Puget Sound region. Jumping from a height of over 2,000 feet and battling a strong wind, the 10 members of the Golden Knights got some amazing views of the Tacoma area, Mount Rainier, and Commencement Bay. This elite parachute team travels all throughout the country, performing at events and special recognitions. The landing zone for this jump was a parking lot near Multicare's Tacoma General Hospital. A good-sized crowd gazed towards the sky as the jumpers made their way down. Several members of the team had made over 4,000 jumps. It took about eight minutes from the time they left their plane to touchdown with amazing accuracy and the Golden Knights received a warm welcome from those who witnessed the event. 
As tradition, the group then presented a worker at each hospital they perform at with an award, honoring their continued efforts in keeping the community healthy. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll show you what the Tacoma Police Department is doing to help keep the public safe while on the water this summer. Don't go away. Welcome back to Tacoma Report. It's time to see what it's like to swim with the fish at the Point Defiance Zoo and Aquarium. The Pacific Seas and South Pacific Aquariums both reopened in early July. Certain social distancing and masking requirements are in effect for the two indoor exhibits, but the underwater critters are active and are ready for viewing. The Baja Bay Habit, along with the Northwest Waters, the Shark Tank, Lagoon and Blue Hole exhibits all feature an international cast of underwater players featuring Bruno the Sea Turtle and old time favorites like the Sand Tiger Sharks and even the shy Moray Eel Gordon in the lagoon. Timed online ticketing for entry into PDZA is required with hours from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. For more information on the aquariums and other park attractions, go to pdza.org open. The Tacoma Police Department is spending the summer on the waterways in and around the Port of Tacoma, making sure everyone has a safe boating and paddling experience. In a story that was taped before face masks were required, Tacoma Report's Jason Plute takes us out on the water with the city's Marine Services Unit. Be safe out here, okay? The Tacoma Police Department has a Marine Services Unit and helps keep boaters, paddlers, and commercial vehicles safe on Tacoma's waterways. Well, Tacoma Police Department Marine Unit, uh, we operate on the water here uh, to ensure uh, primarily water safety for everybody, uh, recreational, commercial vehicles. Uh, we have a lot of commercial vehicle traffic uh, and a lot of recreational vehicles mixing together in the same space, and so we got to make sure that they operate in a safe manner. It could be bow riding, it could be uh, a wake violation too close to shore, it can be an overloaded boat, too many occupants on board. Whatever the violation is, we're going to stop them for that. We try to focus on the education. We don't like to be the mean guy out here uh, cracking the whip, but we, you know, we try to focus on education first. We all have a whistle, right? Awesome, thank you. Give them friendly reminders, encourage them, uh, educate them and then hopefully the next time we see them on the water, it, it makes a difference and they're out here safe. The Port of Tacoma is the eighth busiest port in the nation, so the Tacoma Police Department partners with the U.S. Coast Guard, U.S. Customs, Department of Fish and Wildlife, and port authorities to keep it safe. We're in a post 9-11 era, there's no doubt about it, and we have operate one of the larger ports on the west coast here, so just being out here, having that presence out here, watching for anything that's out of the ordinary, um, any threats that, that might, uh, hinder the safety of the port. It's, that's one of the other main reasons we're out here. The officers patrol the waters in a 31-foot safe boat, complete with twin 300-horsepower mercury outboards and all the bells and whistles needed to help keep people safe, which is usually just fine with the public. Because of the terrorists and people like that that are out there, uh, it's a presence that, that will abate any of these problems that would happen, I'm thinking. The boating community is really supportive of law enforcement, so you don't you don't go a day without people waving at you and happy to see you and just very, it's a tight-knit community, the boating community, especially out on the Puget Sound. Oh, I think it's very important, especially in this day and age. And it's, these guys are over the top and they're wonderful and they are really good at what they do. And I think the Tacoma Police, especially on the water, is important. But we're also out here to help people. Um, we do water rescues. Uh, people that might be injured on the water, vessels that might be uh, in distress, we're out here for them. Which isn't to say all the fun and beauty of Puget Sound is only for boaters, kayakers, and paddlers. Call patrolling the waters of Tacoma a fringe benefit of keeping everyone safe. Your area of operation is just beautiful. I mean, where else do you get to see orcas and dolphins and, you know, people having a good time? Reporting for Tacoma Report on the Theophos Waterway, I'm Jason Plute. The department's Marine Services Unit also has a dive unit which handles emergencies under the water, including Wapato Lake. For more information, visit the department's website. In the past, Tacoma Report has featured stories on out-of-the-way places and activities that might get overlooked from time to time. 
Today, Lane Ficke takes a look at Metro Park's Tacoma's China Lake and gives us some insight into this hidden gem. It's called a lake, but this body of water is originally thought to be a peat bog from a group of bogs that were prevalent in this area years ago. Today, China Lake can almost be called a pond when you see it full of lily pads, which provide the perfect environment for ducks, turtles, and frogs. Hard to believe this hidden sanctuary is right next to Highway 16. The lake is a little hard to see. The undergrowth has moved right up to the water's edge, but there are some cutouts where the beauty of this park shines through. China Lake is one of the many north-south drainages that were left in the Puget Sound lowlands as the glaciers um, moved forward and retreated during the glaciation periods. But it left this beautiful drainage and natural area, 28 acres in all, um, that help with stormwater benefit now. It receives a lot of um, the watershed drainage, comes into China Lake and is slowly infiltrated into the ground before it moves back off uh, towards Puget Sound. It's not uncommon to find people walking their dogs or just out for a daily stroll. It's roughly half a mile to walk the loop around China Lake, and there are numerous other trails that branch off for people to explore, some with their bikes. China Lake is the third largest lake in Tacoma behind Wapato and Snake Lake. Those that visit here know just how special this area is. China Lake is a wonderful, beautiful place as you'll see. It, it's an amazing green space and very important. This is a very high traffic area, 16, just over the hill. It's a buffer area, green space for a community. If I need to get away and just walk and calm, that's a, it. That helps me, but it also helps everyone around me. Enjoy. I mean, this is a wonderful, wonderful place. And to keep this area pristine for years to come, a group of dedicated volunteers work with Metro Parks Tacoma. We have a, a very active stewardship group right now that comes and does monthly work parties to try to uh, rehabilitate some of the, um, the landscape and the native plantings uh, that have become overrun with invasive weeds. Unfortunately, in spots, there's a lot of ivy in this park. China Lake, hidden from most, but in plain sight to those who know where to look. For Tacoma Report, I'm Lane Ficke. More information about all of the great locations operated by Metro Parks Tacoma can be found at their website. And as a reminder, Metro Parks Tacoma asks that you wear a mask and practice social distancing whenever you are in one of their parks or using their facilities. And finally, blueberry season is in full swing, and now's the time to start grabbing up some berries at Charlotte's Blueberry Park in Tacoma. We brought you this story last year before the new normal of social distancing and masking requirements, but the blueberries don't care and are ripe for picking. In this encore segment by reporter Dave Gordon. Blueberries considered a multifaceted fruit packed full of antioxidants, yet able to fill sweet tooth cravings. Here in Tacoma South End, just off East 72nd and East D Streets, there's a tasty public park with hundreds of bushes of ripening blueberries waiting to be picked. Charlotte's Blueberry Park once was a blueberry farm, started in the early 1950s. Metro Parks Tacoma official took over the place and kept it for blueberries, 20 acres of blueberry bushes, just ripe for public picking. The park is named in honor of Charlotte Valbert. She was a local resident who took care of the place after it was abandoned for so many years. She groomed the area, got rid of weeds, took loving care of the blueberries themselves. Blueberry picking season at the park runs from July through September. It's open from sunrise to sunset with berry picking open to the public on a first pick, first serve basis. Um, I really enjoy picking the blueberries and it's free and it's so such a big park, it's wonderful. I'm a culinary, culinary arts student so I use the blueberries for all kinds of things. Kind of want a really peaceful place to get away to today and get some berries at the same time. You know, something that we could all be together and uh, have have a nice day outside and relaxing. Charlotte's Blueberry Park features a variety of blueberries that last through summer. Just bring a bucket and prepare to pick, pluck, and munch throughout the day. We got blueberries! Yay! Look! Charlotte's Blueberry Park is 20 acres of enjoyment. Just make sure that next time you come up here, you're not wearing a white shirt 
doing a stand-up for the news. For Tacoma Report, I'm Dave Gordon. That's all the time we have on this edition of Tacoma Report. A great way to find out about the services the City of Tacoma has to offer is by going to cityoftacoma.org. As we leave you today, here is more of the video of the U.S. Army Golden Knight Parachute Team that recently celebrated healthcare workers and first responders in Tacoma. Until next time, I'm Laura Proctor. Thanks for watching.